so yeah, I have uh, six different situations that I'll work through here. It's all multiple choice. Uh, right down, out of page up, zero, left into the page. So uh, I'll just do each one at a time. And I think the way we did this camera and everything, um, the way it worked the best was uh, for you to imagine that I'm a person living in your computer screen. So when I want to refer to something that's pointing into the screen, then this is the direction I would be using. So from your perspective, my hand um, will look like it's pointing into the screen, you know, farther into the screen, someone who's living in your computer screen. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, so in all these uh, scenarios, the basic expression I'm relying on is this, because it's asking for, um, because it's asking for uh, direction of magnetic force on a positive charge. So the, the formula I'm using is the formula for the magnetic force, uh, sometimes called the Lorentz force. Well, I guess not by itself. Well, magnetic force, which is the amount of electric charge times V cross product with B. And this is a good practice for right-hand rule. If you have forgotten it from physics 4A or if you're out of practice, there's a whole long lecture video on that too, watch that too. So this is a additional practice. Um, so I'll, I'll just work through it. So all, for all these, I'm do, basically doing V cross B and the direction of that V cross B will be the direction of the force vector here. So um, A, so I, so this is the how you how you. Uh, by the way, I'm kind of happy to see that OpenStax uses this whole hand version. That's the one I would recommend. If you have seen the three finger version elsewhere, I mean you are welcome to continue to use it, but it's not what I would recommend. The whole hand version is more versatile. It uh, deforms to other versions. That's very useful. So I would recommend getting used to the whole hand version. So the whole hand version. So. I'm doing, uh, so B is, uh, this uh, notation means my field coming out of the screen. So it should be, so V is downward. So I first orient my hand in the direction of the first vector and I rotate it until I can curl my finger into the direction of the, um, into the direction of the, um, in, in, into the direction of the second vector. So here it's pointing into, so that's not right. I have to orient it this way so that I can do V cross B. So now I'm, my fingers are curling in the direction pointing out of the page. So the rough direction that my thumb points in, that indicates the direction of the cross product. And what I want you to uh, know, remember, be reminded of is that really cross product is giving you the, the right hand rule is giving you a rule to choose between two directions. When you do V cross B, you have only two possible choices here. Uh, one direction that's perpendicular to V and B and another direction that's also perpendicular to V and B. So, so, um, um, so that's the only two choices that the right hand rule is choosing between. So, you know, the fact that I can't quite get my thumb horizontal, that shouldn't matter. So on my own video, I see that my thumb is pointing to the left. So let me just do, yeah. <laughs> so when you do V cross B, what you should end up with is the direction to the left. So this is the direction for V cross B and hence the direction of the force. Um, so let me do A, B, and then I'll put in both answers at the same time. Um, so let me try V cross B. So V uh, in the direction that's um, upward and oh, I have to orient my fingers carefully. So on your screen, it should look like I'm uh, doing V cross B so that um, my fingers curl to the right and the direction my thumb points in, it's a further, into the screen. So the V cross B should be pointing into the screen. 
and just making sure it looks correct from my perspective. <laughs> and so all this direction would change if I'm uh, in a mirrored view. That's why I'm kind of being mindful of how I appear to you, not how I would appear to myself in a mirror, because that turns a right-hand rule into a left-hand rule. Um, so, okay, the answer is A is leftward, and so for B is into the page. Let me mark those and answer it, uh, leftward. Into the page, and uh, let me just submit it so that I know I'm getting it right. <laughs> um, okay, um, let me scroll to see. Let me do the next four, and then we will um, finish up this question. So you go through this practice um, one at a time. <laughs> so for C, um, I orient my hand so that my fingers are pointed the rightward. Again, as it appears to you. Um, and um, so I'm orienting my hand with the first vector and I rotate it until I can curl my fingers uh, in the direction into the page. So that would be this direction. And so V cross B points upward. And just double checking <laughs> from my own view. <laughs> yeah, V cross B points upward. And I do recommend that you practice yourself because uh, this is the thing that you'll be doing a lot throughout magnetism and it, it takes practice. Oh, you know, uh, D, I don't have to do anything. Um, so first, I guess if you're just trying to apply the right hand rule, I hope you kind of see the difficulty. So your V points to the right and how do I orient it so that my fingers curl in the direction of B? You should see that I can't. And that's okay because the, uh, the formula for the magnitude of V cross B is that the magnitude is equal to the magnitude of these vectors times sine theta between the two vectors. Here, the theta between the two vectors is what, 180 degrees? So this is zero anyway. So it doesn't matter what direction it is, V cross B is just equal to zero. So. Uh, it kind of matches with the fact that you can't apply right hand rule. Doesn't matter, it's zero anyway. Um, okay, let me do E. So V is going into the page and I need to curl it so that, um, <laughs> orient my hand so that I can curl my fingers in the direction of B, which is upward. You can't quite see it, but I'm trying to do it. <laughs> then my thumb points on your screen to the right so let me just double check. Yeah, <laughs> um, so that's the direction of the cross B. And you know, um, when you apply right hand rule, sometimes you should be looking silly because you are distorting your arm and hand into positions that sometimes you don't want to. Um, so you should, you should look weird as you're doing it. <laughs> and hopefully when you get good at it, you can just do it in your head without looking weird. Okay, uh, let me do F, that's a V coming out of the page and I orient my fingers so that I can uh, curl my fingers in the leftward, wait, that's not leftward. Uh, curl my fingers in the leftward direction. So um, my thumb points down, so that's a V cross B. Okay, so, okay, so up, zero, right, down. So that's it. That's uh, and um, yeah, it, it's a good it, it's a good practice to get. It, uh, um, it, it I yeah, and uh, you you will see uh, this application more next week as we derive magnetic fields from Bill Savart's law, and the whole thing is just another set of applied cross product. So. So good, I hope uh, all of this makes sense. Uh, let me keep going with uh, the other questions. Um, so I said I want to question two because um, I guess it's a slightly different from question one. I think they, yeah, they give you the cross product and they are having you come up with, so, so I, I hope you have fun doing it. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but the thing to, so, let me tell you two things. So the, the thing to be aware of is um, what it's asking for. And the other thing that's 
useful to know as a matter of, I don't know, math or trivia that sometimes helps you is um, you can perform what's called a cyclic permutation on a cross product. So for example, if you have A is equal to B cross C, this will, oh wait, um, you can do cyclic permutation for, um, <laughs> for unit vectors, uh, if you don't have to worry about magnitudes. <laughs> so um, this is an example, actually. You have x cross y is equal to g. Um, that's uh, how right-handed coordinate is decided. You decide on the direction of x, y, and g, so that when you do x hat cross y hat, you get g hat. Um, now, this relationship here implies the next two, which are cyclic permutations of this. Uh, y hat cross g hat is equal to x hat, and g hat cross x hat is equal to y hat. Uh, I hope uh, you can see what I mean by cyclic permutation. You kind of move this as a cycle. Um, so it always goes x, y, g, x cycle, y, g x, y, cycle, g. Uh, so, um, I, so, you know, using this in terms of directions, you can re rewrite this into something useful. So I guess, let me have you verify it. So in terms of direction, uh, what should you get, what you could get doing cyclic permutation is b hat for the direction of the magnetic field is equal to f hat, direction of the force, cross v hat, direction of velocity. Um, so that, that so uh, let me just double check to make sure that is the case. So if I do f uh, f cross of v on the first one, I get magnetic field pointing into the page. So let me double check. Um, if we cross b, yeah, I get so so that's a bit of math trivia that's sometimes useful, um, maybe unnecessary. Yeah.